In this lecture, we will discuss some brief accounts on the ancient and medieval history of Assam. So first of all, we have already covered the ancient history and medieval history of Assam. So in the ancient history, let us recall the fact, first we have discussed the mythological period consisting of rulers like Narakahur, Banakhur, Bhismok, etc. Then we have discussed the Burman dynasty and with Burman dynasty, the real political history of Assam begins. Then we have discussed the Halstambha dynasty, right? And Hazara Burman was a very famous ruler of Halstambha dynasty. Then we have discussed the Pal dynasty. Then we have discussed the later kings of or other kings of Kamrup, right? Then we have covered the medieval history of Assam, right? So here we have started with the Muslim invasion followed by the Kamrup Komata kingdom that was set up by King Hoindha, right? Then we have discussed the Khen dynasty established by Nildhas Khan. Then we have discussed the Sutia kingdom. Then we have discussed the Kosari kingdom, right? Then we have discussed the Bhuya rulers. Then we have discussed Kos kingdom, a very important kingdom of medieval period. Then we have discussed the Jayantia kingdom, Jayantia kingdom. And finally, we have covered extensively the Ahom kingdom, the most important kingdom from examination point of view particularly, right? So here in this lecture, we'll provide a brief account on the ancient and medieval history of Assam. So here we will discuss the archaeological ruins, archaeological ruins and places of historical importance. Then we'll discuss the rock epigraph. That means we'll discuss the source of history, right? Rock epigraphs and inscription. And also we will discuss the coinage, right? So let us start. First of all, we'll discuss the archaeological ruins and places of historical importance. So first comes the Hurja Pahar region. So Hurja Pahar region, basically it is a hill and it is located in Gwalpara district. And in Hurja Pahar hill actually, many sculptures in Assamese culture is called Bhaskarja, right? And also archaeological ruins of 8th to 9th century were discovered. And those sculptures were like Vishnu, Harihar, Lord Shiva, then joint Ithankars depicted on large rock formation, then large Hibalingas, Lord Vishnu with 12 hands, Goddess Durga, etc. Right? Then apart from Hindu sculptures, a number of solid Buddhist stupas and also images of joint Ithankars are also found in the Hurja Pahar region. Right? And all of them belong to the 8th to 9th century. So Hurja Pahar is a very important archaeological site because the remains belonging to different faiths or religion like Hinduism, Jainism and Buddhism all are found at a very common place. So it is historically very important and those can be dated back to 8th to 9th century. That means ancient period of Assam. So here I am showing you these are the archaeological ruins of Hurja Pahar, right? And here you can see these are the images of the giant Ithangas. And here you can see the large Hibalingas here also, right? Now let us discuss the places, other places of historical importance. The first one is the Rangpur. And Rangpur is the Ahom capital. And it is located near the present Hibohagar town. And Rangpur was founded by Rudrahinga in the year 1699, right? Rudrahinga was the son of Jayamati and Godadar Hinga. And the greater Rangpur area, it actually includes the Joyhagar, Gorihagar and other peripheral region. And this particular area actually includes a large number of old temples or doles, then Pukhuri or Tank, then Rampart or Gaur, then stone bridges, right? So, to the north of Rangpur area, at the heart of Sipsagar town, the Hibohagar tank is located and on the bank of Hibohagar tank, Hibodol, Bisnudol and Debidol are located. So, all these are actually built following the order of 
Rani Ambika of Hibokingo, right? Then in the Rongpur, the royal palace Tolator Ghar is also located and the two-storage pavilion Ronghar is also located, right? Then near Tolator Ghar, the Joy Hagar Tank, Fakwa Dol, Ranganath Temple are also located, right? So this is about Rongpur. Then comes Soraydeo. So Soraydeo, currently it is a separate district, but earlier it was a part of the Sipsagar district. So Soraydeo is the first home capital and it was founded by Sorgodeo Sukafa in the year 1253 AD. So basically Sukafa entered Assam in 1228 AD. Then he wandered around the Brahmaputra Valley and finally established his capital in Soraydeo in this particular year, 1253. And Soraydeo was also divided into different areas. And Soraydeo is very famous for the Moidams. And Moidams are basically the burial palace or the burial place for the king and the other members of Ahom royal family. Right? And in the Soraydeo region, there is a place of worship that is called Deokhal. And Deokhal, actually, it had eight columns and a long kuri dole. So, this is about Soraydeo. Then comes Gorgaon. So Gorgaon is located in Najira, Sibohagar district. So Gorgaon basically it was established as a Ahom capital by Suklang Mung and also known as Gorgonya Raja in the year 1540. And the famous Karenghar or Gorgaon palace is located in this place. And in Gorgaon there were three large gateways once upon a time. Bordwar, then Pani Duar, then Sun Poradwar, right? But actually, you will not find these large gateways now. But earlier, these large gateways were there. Then comes Sorgwa. So, Sorgwa is the second capital of the Ahoms, and it was set up by Sudangfa or Bamuni Kuan. And at present, Sorgwa contains two large modems as well as traces of household compounds. And Maduri is another region near Joy Hagar Nazira Road, and also Maduri had around 10 Moidams. So, the Moidams of uh, the Ahom Kingdom were scattered at different places, mostly in Upper Assam region, right? Then, Horu Pothar and Bor Pothar. So, these are also historically important uh, places, and these are in Gulaghat district, Horu Pothar and Bor Pothar. So, in the Nogajori Khanikar Gaon village near Horupathar, a stone inscription of 5th century uh, is found and also rocks bearing Brahmi script has been also discovered. Then the Duboroni village near Barpathar has yielded some sculptures which belong to the 8th century. So, these are historically important, particularly they has a relation with the ancient history. Here you can see 5th century and 8th century, right? And Horupathar and Barpathar are in Gulaghat. Then comes Tezpur. Tezpur is one of the most famous historically important place of Assam. Right? So Tezpur is the present day Tezpur town and the peripheral region. And once upon a time, it was known as Horupesar. Right? Because it was the capital of Halstambha dynasty from 655 to 900 AD. So a hillock uh, named Bamuni Pahar in Tezpur, it contains ancient brick and stone ruins. And these ruins are famous for their exemplary artistic finesse and those ruins can be dated back to 9th and 10th century. Ancient Assam. Then comes Mahavairab temple. So the temple can be uh, traced back to 9th century, right? And Mahavairab temple is located in the heart of Tezpur town. And the ruins of the old Mahavira temple are also found in the present day modern temple. Then Dor Parbatiya is a very important place in Tezpur. So in Dor Parbatiya, ruins of a door frame of a temple was found. And the carving, right, in the carving of that particular door frame, it resembles the characteristic of the early Gupta school of sculptures, right? And here you can see, this is the door frame of uh, you know, Dwarf Parbatiya in Tezpur, historically very, very important. Then there were some other monuments of ancient and medieval period in Tezpur, Hazara Pukhuri, Bhairabi Temple, then brink uh, remains of Dhenukhana Parbat, 
then 8th century temple ruins at Masgao, then Mukhalingam known as Tingesor, etc. Right. So Tezpur is a very famous historical place, mainly related to ancient history of Assam. Then comes Guwahati. So Guwahati has been traditionally known as Pragzuti Pur and it was the capital of ancient kingdom of Kamrup. And in Guwahati, a number of brick built temples are found and they belong to ancient and medieval period like Kamaikha temple, Janardhan temple, right? Then Bokhistha temple or Bokhistha Sram, Umananda temple, Nambagraha temple, Ugratara temple, etc. So in Guwahati, you will find a number of temples, right? Then in the North Guwahati region, that means on the north bank of Brahmaputra, a large number of 18th century brick temples are also found like Ostwakanto Temple, Kurma Janardhan Temple, Moni Kornachar Temple, and Digheswari Temple, etc. Right? Then comes Biswanath. So Biswanath is also a historically important place. Earlier Biswanath was a part of Sunitpur district, but now Biswanath is a separate district, right? So it is situated on the north bank of Brahmaputra and it is popularly known as Biswanath Ghat. Since it is located on the bank of Brahmaputra, it is known as Biswanath Ghat, basically, right? So, Biswanath Ghat had a great strategic importance, particularly during late medieval period, because in Biswanath, the Ahoms had a regular camp. And historically, Biswanath is known as Gupta Kahi, right? And there were several temples of late medieval period in Biswanath, but now only two of them are found. And there is also a Hibodol uh, in Biswanath. And this particular Biswanath area, there is a small river island known as Umatumoni. And it is believed that in that Umatumoni river islet or island, once existed a brick temple of goddess Uma, right? And apart from that, this particular Umatumoni island, it also contains a huge inscription and geometric design, which are engraved on rock face. Right, so Biswanath Ghat is also a historically important place. Then comes Baihata. So Baihata is around 40 km away from the Guwahati city present day. Right, so the famous architectural ruins of modern Kamdev are located in Baihata region, and it is believed that there were around 20 temples in this location once upon a time, and the ruins of modern Kamdev belong to 10th to 12th century. And Kamdev, he is the god of love, right? And the ruins of uh, modern Kamdev can be traced back to the period of Pal dynasty in Assam, right? And the ruins of Baihata, basically, basically the modern Kamdev, they contains ramparts, walls, pillars, then door frames decorated with flowers, animals, image of Lord Shiva. Then most importantly, sculptures of men, women, and animals in erotic pouches. So the modern Kamdev ruins resembles the Khazuraho in Madhya Pradesh, right? In Khazuraho also, you will find sculptures of men and women in erotic pouches. And similar type of sculpture are also found in Baihata region in the modern Kamdev, right? And here you can see these are the sculptures found in the modern Kamdev. Very, very important. Please remember, right? And modern Kamdev or Bahata region is located on the north bank of Brahmaputra. And now it is a part of the Kamrup district, right? Modern Kamdev. Then comes Haju. Haju is also located on the north bank of Brahmaputra. And currently it is a part of Kamrup uh, district, right? And in Haju, there were around six temples that were built in different periods and the Hoigrip Madhav temple is the principal and oldest temple of the locality and it can be dated back to 8th century right and it is located on the Monikut hill and the Lama is Buddhist so a section of Buddhist also considers Hazu as the place of Mahaparibrana or the death of Saikha Muni or the Buddha right then also the 6th century Darga of Gyasuddin Aulia is located in the Haju region. It is also known as Pua Makkah, right? And this particular Hoigrip Madhav temple, it was rebuilt. Actually, once upon a time, it was during the reign of Kos Kingdom, uh, Kos King Naranayan, 
Kalapahar invaded Assam, right? So Kalapahar destroyed Kamaikha temple as well as Hoigrip Madhav temple. Then later, Raghudev. Raghudev was the son of Silarai. Raghudev had rebuilt this particular Hoigrip Madhav temple. So there might be a question that who rebuilt Hoigrip Madhav temple? Answer will be Raghudev from Coast dynasty or Coast kingdom. Then comes Maibong and Khaspur. So these are related to the Kosari kingdom. So Maibong is located on the east bank of Mahur river in the Kachar district on the northern part basically. And Maibong was the second capital of the Kosari kingdom. So in the history uh, of Suhung Mung, when I discussed that Suhung Mung has driven out the Kosaris from the Dhonkiri valley and also from the from their first capital Dimapur. Then the Kosaris has established their capital, second capital in Maibong, right? And it was established in 1676, right? And there is a monolithic Sondi Mandir that was carved in 1761 AD, right? Then Khaspur. Khaspur is located near the Silchar town of Kasar, right? And it is the last capital of Kasari kingdom. Dimapur, Maibong and Khaspur. And currently the Dimapur is located in Nagaland and that is why I have not included Dimapur. So uh, this particular Khaspur basically it is a small village and it was established in 18th century. And this particular Khaspur region, it houses the archaeological ruins of a king's palace, a lion gate and a sun gate which belong to Kosari kingdom. So let me show you the picture. So this is the ruin of Khaspur. Right. So this picture you may see in the different channels. So here this is the ruin set Khaspur in Kachar. Right. And it belonged to Kasari kingdom. Then let us discuss the archaeological ruins of Numoligar, Deopahar or Deoparbat region. So Numoligar, it is in Gulaghat district. Right. So Numoligar region constituted a part of Kasari kingdom in the medieval period. And in Numoligar, Deopahar region, there exists actually a 12th century temple on a hillock called Deo Parbat or Deo Pahar, right? And actually it also carries some evidences of brick and stone ruins as well. So Numoligar Deo Pahar has a relation with the Kosari kingdom. Then comes Jungal Bolohugar. So it is located in Roha Nogaon district. And basically it is a gore or fortified area. And it's actually a uh, construction can be credited to Jongal Bolohu. Jongal Bolohu was the son of Arimatta. Then comes Amtola. Amtola is a village near Daboka region in Nogao, right? And Daboka region, it was the Dhonkiri Valley once upon a time. Dhonkiri Kapili Valley is basically called the Daboka region, right? So in the Daboka region, some uh, ruins of stone temples uh, are found, which can be dated back to 10th to 12th century, right? Then comes Daboka, Kampur and Jogizan. So all these regions are in Nogaon district. As I have already mentioned, Daboka was an independent territory and the Daboka has also found its mention in the Allahabad pillar inscription of Hamudra Gupta, right? Then comes Daboka, Kampur and Jugijan. So all these regions are in Nogao district. So Daboka was an independent territory as I have already mentioned. And uh, in the Allahabad pillar inscription of Hamudra Gupta, it has also found mention and later it was absorbed into the Kamrup kingdom, right? Then uh, some 8th, 7th to 8th century uh, ruins are also found in the regions called Mikirati, Gostal, etc. Then in Kampur and Amtola, ruins of stone temples can be found as I have already mentioned in the previous slide. And in Jogijan region near Daboka, there is a temple complex that was built in 11th to 12th century, right? Then apart from these regions, as I have already mentioned or discussed, there are some other historical important regions which are in Assam, present day Assam. And in those region, actually archaeological ruins and inscription were also discovered. Say for example, Panbari in Dhuburi, Pratapgarh in Biswanath. Pratapgarh is basically a fortified area near the town of Biswanath Sariyali. Then Boidogarh, it has relation with Arimotto, right? And it is in Rongia. Then Horihinga and Dorongipara in Dorong are such historically important places, right? Now let us discuss the inscription and epigraphs. Tamrolipi and Hilalipi, right? So first 
let us discuss the important inscription here actually we will mention the first one is the Umasal rock inscription so it is a rock cut inscription belong to Hurendra Burman and he was the sixth ruler of the Burman dynasty and it is the earliest inscription discovered in Assam which can be dated back to 5th century very very important question Umasal rock inscription it is the earliest inscription discovered in Assam and it belonged to 5th century then comes Kanai Borohibwa rock inscription so it records the invasion of Turkish Muslim army in 1128 AD right and it refers to the Muhammad bin Bakhtiar who was confronted and worsted by the army of Barthu or Prithu right then comes Hayunthal Kapar plate inscription of Hazara Burman and it can be dated back to 9th century and it gives some you know chronological information regarding the Halstamba dynasty down up to Bonmala and Bonmala was the son of Hazara Burman so these are very important information please remember Umasal rock, in, uh, rock inscription the first and earliest inscription discovered so far then Kanai Borohi Bua Hilalepi it actually records the invasion of Muslim invasion uh, and the victory of Prithu then Hayunthal copper plate inscription which belong to Hazara Burman then there are some other inscription Nogazori Khanikar Gaon stone inscription so basically it is a fragmentary inscription and it belongs to 5th century then Borgao copper plate inscription of Ratnapal so it was issued by Ratnapal in the 12th 25th year of his reign in connection with a grant of land and it provides a lot of information particularly historical evidences then comes Tezpur copper plate inscription of Ballav Deva so these plates are basically copper plates you will either find stone inscription or copper plate so only these two were used copper or stone so this copper plate inscription dated back to 1185 and it gives the names of four rulers Bhaskar, Rayari Deva, Uday Karna and Ballav Dev himself. And apart from this actually inscription I have mentioned there are innumerable inscription which are found in Assam so far. Say for example the Harihar stone image inscription, Narakakur Pahar bronze uh, plaque and the copper bell inscription. So it is not possible to include every uh, you know inscription that is why I have only included the important ones and here you can see right this is the image of the Umasal rock inscription the earliest epigraph of Assam right of 5th century this is the century is important 5th century Umasal rock inscription now let us discuss the coinage of ancient and medieval history so coinage of Ahom is Suklengmung was the first Ahom king to strike coins in 1543 AD and that particular coin was in Ahom or Thai script then Zoydha Singha introduced Sanskrit script in his coin then Godadar Hingo was the first Ahom king who issued annual coins right so he issued coins every year and this practice was followed up to the final or to the fall of Ahom kingdom right so he initiated this particular practice and also he reintroduced Thai script in coins then Rani Fuleswar is the first queen to strike coins in her name then Rajaswar Hingo he issued coins in actually he experimented right so he issued coins in Assamese, Devanagari script and also in Persian script then usually Ahom coins are octagonal or square in shape very very important information right there might be a direct question then what is the shape of ahom coins the option will be octagonal and here you can see right so this is a ahom coin and it has eight sides right octagonal then rajasar Hingo introduced coins of different shapes and kori coins were mostly in use right and during warmore rebellion coins in the name of Bharat Hingo and Harbanando and Ramakanto were also issued right then some other coins Naranayan was the first coast king to strike coins in his name and his coins are of silver and the value was half rupee right and those 
minted coins were known as narayani mudra and coarse coins were round in shape then zok narayan dev and pratap narayan dev of kus uh, kosari kingdom they also issued coin and the last kosari king gobinda chandra also issued a coin of modern type right so here you can see ahom kus and the kosari kingdom all of them have issued coins because they were the major kingdoms of medieval history in assam now let us discuss the chronology of some important historical events first muslim invasion 1206 ad second muslim invasion 1227 ad and the first muslim invasion was led by muhammad bin bakhtiar right and the kamrup king was prithu then uh, beginning of ahom rule 1228 ad i have already mentioned all this battle of pisola 1547 Kos has been accession by Mughals in 1613 Mirzumla's Assam invasion 1662 AD Treaty of Giladhari Ghat in 1663 between Joydar Singh and between Joydar Singh and Mirzumla then Battle of Horai Ghat 1671 then Death of Joymoti 1680 Battle of Itakulis 1682 then there was another treaty between um, Mumbai Tamali Borborwa and Mughals that was known as okhurar ali treaty right then comes uh, first mohammadiya rebellion 1679 captain wells mission 1792 donduwa drew then battle of horai ghat 1671 death of jamadi 1680 battle of itakuli 1682 between godador hinga and mughals first mohammadiya rebellion very important 1769 During the reign of Lakshmi Singh, Captain Wells Mission 1792, Gorinat Singh, Donduwa Drew 1795, Komalasar Singh, then First Burmese Invasion 1817, Sandrakanto Singh, then finally Treaty of Yandabu between Kingdom or King of Ava and British East India Company. So this is how I have covered the ancient history and medieval history of Assam, and in the next lecture we will start. the modern history of assam and there we will discuss the british annexation british rule in assam and the freedom struggle of the people of assam thank you for watching